What's happening, everybody? Chris Esplin here with How to Firebase. I'd like to introduce to you this web series that I'm working on. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about who I am and why you should trust me. And you know what? what is Firebase? What is this data store we've heard so much about? Okay, so first, who am I? My name's Chris Esplin. I am a solo web developer. I build calligraphy.org. It's built entirely off of Firebase and Angular 1.4. It's the, one of the nichest, smallest little businesses on the internet, but you know that's what we do, and it's enough to support our family. So I'm really happy about it. I've been doing this for about three years now. I sit here at this desk and I code up calligraphy.org and all the other tools my wife needs for her business, and and that's that. So I'm a front end web developer first and foremost. I do web, I do front end. You know I've got to write my server code, but I try to keep it to a minimum. And that's where Firebase comes in. So what is Firebase? Firebase is a front-end focused data store. It is a real-time by default data store that exists out in the cloud and your clients connect to it directly. Your clients don't have to go through your server. You don't have to write a REST API. You get real-time data directly from Firebase, from this cloud service. You store your data directly to Firebase and you pull it right out of Firebase. It's what's known as a backend as a service or BAAS. So you don't have to worry about hosting it. In fact, you can't host it. Google hosts it. It sits on Google infrastructure. They hold your data. You take your data from your client, you send it to Firebase, you call for it back, and it keeps it in sync in a real-time connected way with all of the potentially millions of clients you could have. And they don't connect to any sort of server. They connect directly to Firebase. They pull their data directly from the cloud. So that's great. What is Firebase? Firebase is a NoSQL data store in the cloud. Your clients connect to it directly. Now, what does Firebase do well? Firebase is real time by default. So you don't have to waste any time, you know, enabling real time for some features, building up through socket IO systems. No, it's all just real time all the time. Now, yeah, you can do some transactional stuff. If you don't want it to be real time, you can have you know, these defined transactions. And I use those occasionally, but for the most time, for the most part, I'm just presenting data in real time to my, my connected clients. So also, of course, Firebase lets you skip writing the REST API. Yeah, you're gonna have to write some server code. It's inevitable, but it's, it's just minimal. You know, a six month project for me would take me a whole year if I had to write all the backend code, but I don't. I get my REST API for free and I, you know, I'm willing to pay for that. So other thing that's really nice about Firebase is it scales seamlessly across, you know, all the connected clients you could want. It, they handle that scaling. You don't have to worry. If your app gets huge, yeah, they're going to, they're, they're going to be able to service a lot of connected clients. So that brings us to what Firebase does not do particularly well. So for example, let's say you run, you know, let's say you're building Facebook and you're going to have Facebook levels of data, your Snapchat levels of data. I wouldn't use Firebase for that. You've got too much data. Firebase is for sort of your presentation layer and for, you know, for, for smaller mid-sized apps. Yeah, it can be everything for you. You can save all your data there, but if you've got a really large application and you're going to have a lot more server work to do, you're going to have to have a lot of optimizations. It's going to end up being very specific. And Firebase as a, a backend as a service is likely not going to be, you know, the perfect fit for your application. Now, for a solo developer like me, I would never do that. All my stuff sits on Firebase because that's you know, by far the most efficient place for it to live. So what else does Firebase not do great? Uh, it's cloud only, so you can't host it locally. You get on an airplane, tough luck. I mean, that's... That's not a deal breaker for most people anymore. I mean, we're all getting used to the fact that a lot of the really good high-end services, especially Google services, live in the cloud and don't live in your machine. So that's just something you all have to deal with. Um, next, of course, is vendor lock-in. You always get vendor lock-in with Firebase. You get a lot of vendor lock-in. If you build on Firebase, you kind of build on Firebase. I, I wouldn't ever imagine you know, migrating away from it. That being said, you can't really migrate away from anything. You're always getting vendor lock-in. You're always making a bet anytime you write code. I personally feel very comfortable with my my you know my entire livelihood resting on Firebase. I'm not worried about it. You've seen in the last few years, if you paid attention, you've seen Parse, which was a Firebase competitor, come and go. 
Firebase got purchased by Google, but before that, Parse had been purchased by Facebook. And Facebook discontinued Parse, made it an open source project, and just got out of the business. And recently, and this is a little more troubling, I've seen a company called RethinkDB, which I was a big fan of. Lots of people were big fans of it. They were doing stuff similar to what Firebase has done, but you know, from a different perspective. It's kind of it's kind of cool to see the that different perspective, that different approach to a modern database. So RethinkDB, super popular, lots of users. I think they had a you know they had a an office in Mountain View. And they recently went out of business and had to open source RethinkDB. So now it's open source. It's, a, it's an open source project, but they don't have the funding behind it. And it turns out it's really hard to make money as a small database company. It looks like Firebase dodged a bullet getting acquired when they did. Because now Google backs it. Google's throwing all of their infrastructure at it. They're throwing their money at it. They're rolling Android developers into Firebase, they're rolling these new features into Firebase saying, hey, use Firebase, this is our solution, this is our future. So finally, just before I sign off, I wanna talk a bit about how much Firebase costs. People always ask, you know, you're gonna get stuck paying for this, what happens if your app gets big? So Firebase has an extremely generous free tier. You can run your apps for a long time on the free tier. But, you know, I sign up, I pay for it. Who cares, it's just not that expensive. It's five dollars per gigabyte stored and a dollar per gigabyte transferred and frankly most applications you're not storing gigs of data user data is just not that much you're storing a few kilobytes here and there so i really don't spend that much money in firebase and if you if you can't make more money than you're spending in firebase if it becomes a real problem for you you've architected things just horribly wrong and your business is going to fail sorry like it's it's not Google and Firebase, they did not get into this to make loads of money on Firebase. They got in, in to develop a great product and to get buy-in from the community. And they're going to make their money elsewhere. They're not making their money on, on Firebase. Now, this is just my quick intro to how to Firebase. This is a little web series I'm in the process of producing. I'd like to cover all the, all the goodies you need to know to become proficient with Firebase and to use it. I'm gonna do it from a web perspective. I feel like it's a great platform to build a website on top of. You know, my whole business, calligraphy.org, lives on top of Firebase and is very happily, you know, three years in, I'm still using it, still really happy with it. And your Android and iOS apps can do the exact same thing. The concepts I'm gonna talk about will transfer really well. So thanks a lot for listening and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,